Did you guys hear about the Willy Wonka thing that went down in the UK a few days ago? If not, then buckle up, because you're in for a wild ride. Advertisements for an event called Willy's Chocolate Experience started popping up on the internet a few weeks ago. If it sounds like a bootleg Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, that would be because it is. There's no legal relation to the actual Charlie and the Chocolate Factory franchise. On the official website for the event, williechocolateexperience.com, it's advertised with the tagline, Indulge in a chocolate fantasy like never before. Capture the enchantment. Yes, the exclamation mark is on its own line there. Tickets to Willie's Chocolate Experience, there's no way that's trademarked, are on sale now. Clicking that Book Now button leads to a dead page. What most people notice about this whole thing is that it's either entirely AI-generated or entirely written by a Chinese person using Google Translate. For example, listen to some of these pitches. Dive into the whimsical of Willie's Chocolate Experience, a place where chocolate dreams become reality. Yeah, I can already tell this is going to be a chocolate dream. Your journey begins in an enchanted garden with giant sweets, vibrant blooms, mysterious-looking sculptures, and magical surprises that add an extra layer of wonder to your chocolatey experience. Navigate through peculiar but enchanting garden, collecting delicious beans of all colors, shapes, and sizes. Who knows, perhaps you might be able to grow your very own enchanting garden. It's hard to really put it into voice, but there's a lot of weird uh, punctuation mistakes and spelling mistakes that just make the whole passage seem off. In the Imagination Lab, prepare to be captivated by a visual spectacle. Encounter mind-expanding projections, optical marvels, and exhibits that transport you into the realm of creativity. This space invites you on a surreal journey where the boundaries between reality and fantasy harmoniously merge, resulting in an enchanting and visually striking encounter. Brace yourself for an adventure that will leave you spellbound. You should also notice at this point that it's not just the text that is AI generated. All of the accompanying images are also obviously AI generated too. In the Twilight Tunnel, get ready for an exhilarating and immersive adventure. Journey through a dimly lit passage adorned with captivating projections, enigmatic sounds, and surprising turns that will immerse you in suspense and excitement. It's a heart-pounding experience you've never experienced before. There's no earthly way of knowing <laughs> He's singing. which direction we are going. In Chenerining Entertainment, Cat Gak <laughs> Cat Gakating Live Performance, Karchi Tunes, Exarcerdre Lollipops, a Pasadice of Sweet Teats. Oh boy, sign me up. I love sweet teats. So, tickets to this event cost about £35, and it was held one day only, February 24th, 2024, lasting about an hour, at a Box Hub warehouse in Glasgow. Well, that seems a little bit shady, doesn't it? And oh my god, the pictures to come out of this thing were legendary. This pic is probably the one that went viral the most, of this very sad-looking Oompa Loompa. My god, I feel bad even just looking at this. Oh, she was joined by a second sad Oompa Loompa at one point. Oh, actually, they were called Wonka Doodles, not Oompa Loompas. I guess that makes everything better. They had no real chocolate to hand out to the kids that were present, but hey, at least there's a table with half-filled shot glasses of limeade. That's something, right? Nah, man, there's just no saving this. All the pictures that came out of this shit show are just really, really sad. The worst thing is, you can see that there's about 5% of an attempt here, you know? Like, if these guys just wanted to take your fucking money and run, there'd be an empty warehouse. But no, they somehow actually got a hold of a big rainbow arch, and a whimsical enough looking signpost, and other random things that could be kinda Willy Wonka-esque. But it looks like they finished about half a day out of several weeks of necessary work in order to pull something like this off, and they just said, fuck it, this is good enough. Imagine being that poor kid, dude. Like, this is your birthday or something, and your parents are bringing you to the Willy Wonka show, and it's just this garbage pile. Look at their faces, dude. They know this is a dumpster fire. The meth lab Oompa Loompa looking girl is a local actress named Kirsty Patterson, and she had no qualms about talking down to the whole thing. Now, I don't blame her for being a part of it. A gig's a gig. She gave an interview to Vulture about the whole experience. It did seem like there was a production going, but to me it wasn't a finished production, just the start. It was the first time me and the other actors met. I've never had a script the night before ever in my life, so when I got the script the night before, I was like, oh, this is not. They kept going on about how you could just improvise. I was skeptical of them saying that too, because if you've written a script, then you'd probably pride yourself on what you've written, right? 
You wouldn't want people to improvise. I kinda thought it was AI generated, but by this point I'd signed the contract. Given the amount of people paying to go and the amount they were paying us, I thought they'd have sufficient costumes. So at this point I was like, what is it you want us to wear? What is the makeup like? Because it's a Willy Wonka experience, you need to have good costumes, because it's all meant to be a bit imaginative. But we didn't know what we were wearing at that point. They said they were going to be working through the night or whatever to fix it up, so I just assumed it would be a lot better the next day. What happened when you turned up on Saturday? It was the exact same! I was like, I don't know if I want to actually do this. But I'd signed the contract, and part of me didn't want to disappoint the kids going to this. Honestly, it was bad enough. I knew it was shocking, but I know I'm good at what I do, so I was like, if I can bring a wee bit of something good to this… At this point, they gave us the costumes. They were so inappropriate for what it was. It was just strange, and they were very cheaply made. It was almost like they were secondhand. They didn't have any makeup or anything. This is something I've never experienced ever in my life. By this point, I'm judging myself for letting this go on as long as it did. But we got the costumes, and I started seeing the kids come in, and they were all dressed up, and I was just feeling so guilty. Another actor, Paul Connell, played Willy Wonka at the event. Sorry, Willy McDuff, gotta respect the IP. He posted his experiences working on this nightmare on his TikTok account. I feel for anyone who bought tickets to this event, um, people who are expecting a magical chocolate experience uh, and got me in a top hat in a dirty warehouse in Glasgow. Um, people who wanted Timothy Chalamet and got Timothy Charlatan. I got cast as the part on the Thursday um, and was told that I needed to learn the script for the Friday. So I said, no problem, send it over. The script was 15 pages, monologue, pretty much, of AI-generated gibberish. We were told on the uh, experience to hand out a jelly bean, one jelly bean uh, per child, um, and a quarter of a cup of Tesco's own brand lemonade. That was what the children got. No, no chocolate. There was no chocolate to be had at this chocolate factory, which I really think they missed the trick because if there's ever a an event to sell chocolate, I'd say it was this one. He also explains the Twilight Tunnel, which unfortunately was not as interesting as the tunnel from the movie. We turned up as a group of actors um, in the morning on the Saturday and saw what this was. Um, you could say it was a it was a world of imagination in that you had to imagine it was not a dirty old warehouse. <laughs> But we walked around this place and saw um, just health and safety nightmare for a start. Um, we saw there was no special effects that was promised. There was a thing that was supposed to be called the Twilight Tunnel, which was supposed to be a tunnel that, um, like, like a, a tunnel that everyone walked through that was like dark, but there was supposed to be stars like twinkling inside it and stuff like that, which I thought could have been quite cool. Um, what it was was. Um, a bunch of checkered flags uh, pinned to a wall with some mirrors that were that were found, I don't know where, maybe, probably the toilets. Then our guy fills us in on some of the lore of this failed event. Yeah, the in-universe lore, listen to this. One of my favorite lines was, there is a man who lives here, his name is not known, so we call him the unknown. The Unknown is an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls. What? <laughs> what? What is an evil chocolate maker for a start? Is it a, does he make evil chocolate or is he an evil man who makes chocolate? And what do you mean he lives in the walls? <laughs> so I had to perform that line with uh, with with gusto and, and and validity um and that was that was a challenge as as an actor the script had a moment where i was supposed to um suck up the unknown with a giant uh, vacuum cleaner and i asked about that and the people uh, running the event were like we we don't know what to do with that just just improvise that I can't, I can't improvise a vacuum cleaner. I, I either have, you either have a vacuum cleaner or you don't have a vacuum cleaner. That's right. The unknown, an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls. At least the people who live in my walls are friendly. 
This is the unknown. Yep, it's just a guy in a robe and a mask. What is that? It's the unknown. No. Even though it was the sad Oompa Loompa that initially went viral, the unknown really is the breakaway meme of this whole thing. People made a whole bunch of fan art of this character. To the point that there was actually a push to try and get them into the real Willy Wonka lore. It came out just a day ago that The Unknown was actually played by a 16 year old girl. The most surprising thing for me was learning that that was her real hair. Hello, it's Felicia, and this is my official unknown face review. So, yeah. Ba 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 ba. Hello, I'm Felicia, I'm 16. And I am the unknown. First of all, I am a ghetto. Sorry to disappoint. Um, second of all, this is actually my real hair. It is not a wink. If you watch some of the videos that have come out of this event, you can tell that people are really quite pissed that this is what they've spent their money to attend. And the actor said that when he came back from his lunch break, the attendees had begun. Well, I'll let him say it. I went on to my lunch break. Uh, I sat in my car, to be honest, and just stared into the void for a little while. Uh, and then when I came back in, that's when things had got a little bit out of control. Um, rightfully so, people were furious, they were shouting, there was people filming things on their phone, uh, there, was, there was things being broken, things being stolen apparently. Um, I, I just walked into this after my lunch um, and was was told to hide, <laughs> which I was like, what has happened? Yeah, apparently it got bad enough that the cops were called and the whole thing had to be shut down with the promise that refunds were coming. So here's the thing. It really seems like all of these actors tried their best. They could tell it was a shit show the moment they stepped through the door, but they're professionals. They knew kids were showing up and they did everything they could. In fact, we can even see in a short clip that our guy is acting as best as he can and the kids seem to be enjoying it a little, for what it's worth. The company that put this whole thing on is called the House of Illuminati, registered to a Mr. Billy Cool. The House of Illuminati website is entirely AI generated, just like the Willy's Chocolate Experience website was, promising all sorts of events that I'm sure we'll see the light of day eventually. They've even got a blog with almost every article being posted on December 16th, 2023, containing pretty much the exact same text with just a change in title and image by an author with the name of admin underscore 63BKWADR, all under the tag creating memories. Oh, don't worry. No one's going to forget this for a while. The only blog post that is different was posted on December 12th. This one titled Immersive Delights, What to Expect at the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Experience. Uh oh, this is probably before Billy Cole discovered copyright law. Let's take a look at what was promised. Get ready to embark on a journey into a world where dreams taste like chocolate as we approach the much anticipated Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Experience. Okay, this is all just the same AI bullshit. Delectable chocolate fountains. Picture yourself standing before cascading chocolate fountains, each velvety stream inviting you to dip, indulge, and savor the richness of Willy Wonka's world. Whimsical performances. The event comes alive with the whimsical performances of the iconic Oompa Loompas. These singing companions guide attendees through the immersive wonders of Willy Wonka's world. Surprises at every turn. As you navigate through the event, be prepared for surprises at every turn giant mushrooms filled with sweets, colossal lollipops, and candy canes that seem to touch the sky. The picture included with the article is clearly not AI generated this time. It seems to be an actual production image of somebody working on giant mushroom props for a real movie or event, which seems right until you realize that Willy Wonka is not Alice in Wonderland, no matter what Johnny Depp says. This image actually comes from a real company that makes fiberglass props and sets for real productions. In fact, he very clearly stole the thumbnail specifically of this image from the fiberglass company's website, and he simply stretched it up for his because the quality on this thing is atrocious. So let's look into the man himself, Billy Cool. I had to pull a lot of this off of a Rolling Stone article because since it was published, he's scrubbed everything of himself off the internet. He pulled down his personal website, but it's still up on the Wayback Machine. On it, he claimed to have four degrees. A recognized PhD, that's a doctor of philosophy, MSci, master of psychology, MBA, master of business administration, but I've never heard of a Psy THD before. Looking it up, it seems to be a doctorate of theocentric psychology. Theocentric psychology is one third armchair psych, one third religion, and one third weird spiritualist life coach. In other words, he's a charlatan. On the website, he claims to have been the CEO of a company called Empowerity, which has since folded. 
His resume also claims that he worked for other marketing companies and government organizations, none of which is probably real. His LinkedIn and YouTube accounts have since been taken down, where he once published business guru and life coach content. He's written 18 books, all of them for sale on Amazon. And yes, the books are also AI generated. Oh, seriously. If you read the reviews for them, everyone's complaining that the whole fucking book is written by an AI chatbot. His most recent books are Operation Inoculation, which is about a world-spanning vaccine conspiracy, and Selling Innocence, which is about human trafficking and illegal immigration. Again, it's all AI generated, cover to cover. I probably would have held off on making this video quite so soon if I could have actually bought one of these books and checked it out myself, but Amazon is no longer allowing them to be sold. Billy Cool also claims to have been a part of a food bank operation in Glasgow. Comments on the Glasgow subreddit point out that his food bank operation launched in February of 2021 after getting permission and funding from the local council, and a local journalist blew him up several times in the local media over the fact that the food bank money seemed to be disappearing with no actual food to show for it. And there he is in the food bank pictures. That's the same guy on the Amazon author profile, the YouTube page, and the videos taken at the Willy Wonka event. I'm going to call the police. Because you're now in liquidation, you're no, no longer a no, company. No, Is that no. why you don't have pictures up of your stuff? No. It's actual full no. shuttle stuff. No, no, we, use, we use artificial intelligence to turn off the chimney. So you're a fake? No, absolutely. You're a fake. That's no. why you don't. That's why you don't advertise exactly what the thing is about. That's what I said. There's not enough information about yeah. it on Facebook. So nothing. And on the website. Nothing. Is that why you hired bouncers? Because you knew we were all going to no, kick off. No, these guys don't. These guys are like the caretakers. They're building. 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 They're while I was looking into this story, I was reminded of a few key events that felt similar, like the short-lived Lapland New Forest Amusement Park, where families expected to go to a Christmas-themed event only to arrive at a ruined mess where the animals were mistreated, the staff didn't care, the attractions were basically made out of garbage, and the whole thing ended with parents fighting the staff and the owners going to prison for 13 months. Or smaller events like stuff like Dashcon and the infamous Ball Pit or Tanacon. The biggest type of thing like this that I can think of was the fire Festival, which I have a vague memory of doing a video on, I think, but I can't find it in my backlog. Maybe I didn't actually do it. Fire Festival was an outdoor music festival back in 2017 held in the Bahamas. Attendees paid several hundred dollars for the privilege of what the company described as luxury villas and gourmet food. Multiple social media influencers promoted the event, as well as the rapper Ja Rule. When the attendees arrived at the island, they discovered that their luxury villa was a leaky tent, their gourmet food was a pre-packaged cheese sandwich and a salad, and that all of the 33 advertised acts had pulled out. The 500 people that eventually showed up at the event arrived to nothing. Their luggage was stolen or destroyed, they had to fight over what tents there were. There was little to no festival staff present, no portable toilets, no water, no internet or cell phone coverage, and no contact with the outside world. Some people hiked across the island to get back to civilization, others had to wait for rescue planes to come pick them up. That is a very quick description of Fire Festival, there's a lot of deep lore on it. But all in all, it was just a scam that rapidly spun out of control into a huge shit show that caused an international incident. Willie's chocolate experience isn't quite that big, but the online fear certainly feels the same. It seems like Billy Cool is just a con artist who took people's money to put on a show and then never actually put it on, and it blew up online because everyone's laughing at how ridiculous and shameless the whole thing is. The main reason we even know anything about Fire Festival in the first place is because some of the people working for it weren't asked to sign an NDA. In much the same way, one of the reasons we know a fair amount about the Woolies Chocolate Experience thing is because, just like everything else at the event, their contracts were also AI generated. In fact, the actor who played Willie had signed a contract. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know why I'm talking about this today. I just felt like it, really. It's not often I get to cover a story that's so ridiculous, so I thought, ah, oh, fuck it. I will say one thing, though. Willie's chocolate experience absolutely brought me some joy. Absolutely, you know, so, so sorry to everybody for, you know, this year and other disappointment. We did try to continue the event in the best manner in which we could. However, again, I am deeply disappointed.